When people think of respiratory therapy, they often picture ventilators, oxygen tanks, and medical professionals performing hands-on procedures at the bedside. While these images capture the clinical and technical nature of the job, they overlook a fundamental skill that supports nearly every decision a respiratory therapist makes. What I'm referring to is math. Believe it or not, formulas and calculations form the foundation of safe, effective respiratory care, yet they're often underestimated by students entering the field. In reality, mathematical competence is not just helpful, it's essential. It empowers respiratory therapists to make precise clinical decisions, interpret complex physiological data, and apply therapy with confidence and accuracy. This video is designed to explain why formulas and calculations matter so much in respiratory therapy, not only for passing exams, but also for excelling in real-world patient care. At first glance, the thought of using math in a healthcare setting might feel intimidating especially for those who associate math with abstract numbers and equations on a chalkboard. But the kind of math used in respiratory care is very different. It's practical, purpose-driven, and tied directly to patient outcomes. These are not theoretical equations, but tools that help you deliver oxygen at safe levels, assess lung function, interpret blood gas values, and set mechanical ventilations with precision. For example, a respiratory therapist must be able to calculate a patient's minute ventilation, understand their alveolar oxygen tension, and determine if they are ventilating or oxygenating adequately. Each of these values depends on a formula, and each decision based on these calculations can be a matter of life or death. For students, understanding formulas isn't just about passing tests. It's about preparing for a future of responsibility and critical thinking. Respiratory therapy programs integrate math into almost every subject area. Mechanical ventilation, ABG interpretation, oxygen therapy, and pulmonary function testing all require the application of formulas. If you ignore this aspect of your education or try to get by without really learning the math, you'll likely find yourself overwhelmed in clinical rotations or struggling with board exam preparation. But more on that later. Conversely, mastering these calculations help you gain a deeper understanding of the concepts behind them. It's one thing to memorize that a normal tidal volume is around 6 to 8 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight. But when you apply that formula to calculate the exact volume needed for a patient during ventilator setup, you begin to appreciate the nuance of individualized care. Formulas give you a framework for thinking clinically. Take, for example, the alveolar gas equation. It may look complex at first, but it allows you to determine how much oxygen is actually reaching the alveoli, which are the tiny air sacs in the lungs where gas exchange takes place. This is critical when evaluating patients with conditions like pneumonia, ARDS, or pulmonary embolism. Knowing how to apply this formula helps you determine if the issue lies in oxygen delivery, gas exchange, or ventilation. That level of insight can't come from guesswork or estimation. It comes from understanding and applying the math. Mechanical ventilation is another area where formulas are important. Ventilator settings like tidal volume, respiratory rate, inspiratory time, and peak pressure aren't just arbitrarily chosen. They're calculated based on the patient's needs and condition. Respiratory therapists use formulas to determine mean airway pressure, static and dynamic compliance, airway resistance, and more. These numbers guide you in adjusting the ventilator, identifying patient ventilator asynchrony, and preventing complications like barrel trauma or volume trauma. If a patient's compliance is decreasing, that could signal stiff lungs due to pulmonary edema or fibrosis. If airway resistance increases, it might suggest bronchospasm or mucus plugging. Understanding the formulas behind these values helps you respond appropriately and swiftly. Another reason calculations are so critical is that they enhance your ability to spot clinical red flags. Let's say you're working with a patient who appears stable but when you calculate their oxygenation index or PF ratio, the numbers indicate worsening gas exchange. That single calculation could prompt you to call for a change in therapy 
or even notify the physician of a potential emergency. It's not enough to rely on vital signs alone. Formulas allow you to dig deeper and uncover subtle changes that could otherwise go unnoticed. In the ICU, where patients are often sedated, intubated, and critically ill, respiratory therapists are expected to function with a high degree of autonomy. There won't always be time to consult a textbook or ask for help. You must be able to calculate oxygen content or ideal body weight on the spot. These are not abstract exercises. They're decisions you'll make during code blues, rapid responses, and ventilator weaning protocols. Accuracy in these moments isn't optional. A mistake in your math could result in a dangerously low ventilator setting or an inappropriate oxygen level, both of which can have serious consequences. Beyond the bedside, formulas and calculations also play a key role in documentation, billing, and communication with the healthcare team. Whether you're charting a patient's ventilator settings, presenting during rounds, or writing a report for a physician, being able to accurately explain and justify your numbers enhances your credibility and professionalism. Physicians often rely on respiratory therapists to interpret data and provide recommendations. When you can back up your clinical judgment with solid calculations, your input becomes more valuable and respected. Now let's talk about formulas and calculations on the board exam. Students often wonder whether or not they'll be required to perform calculations on the exam. Unfortunately, the answer to this question is yes. You will need to prepare for this as they are always seen on every version of the exam. We actually have a very unique but helpful strategy when it comes to preparing for the formulas and calculations on the board exam. After using it, our students are always thankful that they did, especially after they get back their score report. If you want to learn more about our strategy, check out the links to our books and courses below in the description. But in general, the math in respiratory therapy is more than just memorizing formulas. Is about understanding when and how to apply them. That's why practice is key. By working through problems repeatedly, you develop the ability to quickly recognize which formula fits the clinical scenario. Over time, these calculations become second nature, allowing you to think critically and act decisively in both exam rooms and hospital rooms. Some students may be tempted to rely on shortcuts or online calculators to do the math for them. While technology can be helpful, it's no substitute for foundational knowledge. You won't always have access to a device during emergencies, and automated tools can't replace the judgment required to interpret the results. Knowing how to do the math yourself gives you confidence, control, and independence as a clinician. It turns a passive skill into an active part of your critical thinking toolbox. It's also worth noting that the math used in respiratory therapy isn't advanced calculus or high-level statistics. Most of it involves basic algebra, including addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and working with ratios and percentages. What makes it challenging is not the complexity of the math itself, but the context in which it is applied. You're working with real patients under pressure with many variables at play. That's why practicing these calculations until their second nature is so important. The goal isn't just to get the right answer. It's to understand what the answer means and how it should guide your next action. But as you can see, formulas and calculations allow you to quantify what's happening inside the body, tailor your interventions, and monitor progress with precision. Whether you're measuring airway resistance in an asthmatic child, calculating compliance in an ARDS patient, or estimating oxygen delivery in a trauma victim, math gives you the tools to act wisely and effectively. For students just starting out, that might seem daunting. But with time, study, and practice, these formulas become second nature. They're part of how you think, assess, and care for your patients. So if you are a respiratory therapy student, take your formula seriously. Learn, practice, and understand them. Because when you step into that clinical setting, whether it's a quiet med surge unit or a fast-paced ICU, 
Your ability to understand the calculations behind your actions may very well be the thing that makes you not just a good respiratory therapist, but a great one. If you got value from this video, please give it a like and subscribe to support the channel. We have a ton of more helpful videos coming out soon that you don't want to miss. And just a quick reminder, check out our helpful resources in the description if you're ready to take your knowledge to the next level. Have a nice day and thanks again for watching.